Hi, my name is Sadat Munir. I'm from Copenhagen. I have a Pakistani background. I do a film festival called Axe Film Art and Dialogue Festival, which takes place both in Copenhagen and Pakistan. Welcome to Teddy TV. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me. Well, um, my first question is, how did you actually start with the Axe Film Festival, and what, what does it stand for? Okay, uh, the word Axe, uh, it's not an abbreviation like AKS, it's a complete word Axe, which means reflection uh, or shadow, and uh, it's a common uh, word for Urdu, Hindi, Persian, and I think several other uh, South Asian languages. And I think uh, in Arabic as well, it uh, acts me in reflection. So, so, uh, so, so, yeah, we try to create a reflection of uh, queer and LGBTIQ um, minorities in Pakistan through cinema, art, and dialogue. And uh, we try to build uh, a dialogue bridge between the uh, mainstream population or or, or general Pakistani population through small initiatives. Uh, we started this festival in 2014. It's actually an outcome of my previous work in Pakistan, which was a film project on, on uh, trans and uh, gay community in Pakistan. So, uh, so it, 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 it was all connected. Uh, I felt like we could do something more than just making film out there, so we should also create a platform where we can actually do some community work. And uh, Axe Festival create, uh, is, is a work of community, and we try to uh, empower and create a visibility of minorities, especially transgender and queer minorities in Pakistan. Mm. Um, well, what is the situation like for people, for queer people in Pakistan, if you, or well, in the moment that you came up with the festival? Uh, well, <coughs> it's, Pakistan is a huge country. We, uh, the first festival we did in Pakistan was only in two, two, two cities. We did it, we did it in, in, uh, in Islamabad and we did it also in Lahore, which is uh, the second largest city of Pakistan. So the outcome, were, the festival was much appreciated by the community, and uh, and also it was uh, we we managed to uh, bring people, uh, non-community people or people who, are, who do not uh, identify themselves as LGBTIQ, for the festival, and most of, most of them they came from uh, the 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 platforms of people who are more tolerant towards changes, uh, people who are more secular, people who are, who are on the most of, of, on, on the left side, so, or the left wing side. Hmm. Um, yeah. Did you experience any, well, any statal obstacles or any threats to the festival so far? We are very new in Pakistan, so we only had one festival in Pakistan so far. So, uh, and, and most of it happened through word of mouth. We did not disclose any of our venues. So, so most of our guests, they came through friends of friends and then we also, I mean, our program was online, our schedule was online, but not the venues. So we, we, we asked people to send us an email or contact some numbers. So we screened all of our audiences who attended the festival, so just for the security reasons. And I think we are, we are still going to do the same. We want to screen the audiences, but, but then again, it's a huge country. People are craving for something different. People are uh, people are looking into. They're curious about uh, uh, about festivals, about a uh, platforms where where they can actually talk about issues or taboo issues. So uh, so even though it's through word of mouth, so we managed to gather uh, quite many people. I was I was actually expecting last time when we had it. In 2014, I was expecting if we had like 100 people coming for the festival over seven days, that would be a success. But we had actually more than 500 people who came for the festival in both cities for for seven days. So mm. no, that was a big success. And we have some uh, really good partners in Pakistan. Uh, some foreign embassies, they help us 
uh, uh, arranging some screening venues, and then we have uh, some liberal art houses. Uh, uh, they, they, they actually became our home in Pakistan, and we are still going to collaborate with them. Uh, one particular uh, art house which I would like to share is called Olomo Polo, which is based in Lahore. It's a very new uh, art house, and they do a lot of uh, liberal and secular kind of uh, uh, display in their art house. So, so, so they provided us with the venue to organize the festival. Hmm. Well, you said, well, the festival is also called the Film, Art and Dialogue Festival and you also said that you wanted to create a bridge for people and that more people came than you expected. So how would you describe the role of a queer film festival in Pakistan? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Um, how would you describe the role of a queer film festival in Pakistan in terms of fighting for queer rights? Uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's the level of queer rights is, uh, uh, I don't know, I mean, the, we, we don't want to uh, uh, create the same kind of Western queer right movements, LGBT movement, because uh, a, it can create some sort of awareness, but it can also create a lot of trouble in Pakistan. So we don't take the gay agenda or, or the pink washing agenda in Pakistan. So the first one is basically, we, 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 we try to, uh, Awoke uh, knowledge within the community out there. Uh, so we we take uh, shelter under trans community, which is much accepted community in Pakistan. Transgender community, much accepted community in Pakistan. They are officially uh, uh, recon recognized as third gender. So so officially, actually, we can we can if we all keep it through transgender uh, label, so we can have this festival. In Pakistan, but while having our transgender agenda, we also come up with the, our queer agenda. So, 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 so it's it's slightly easier for us to 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 actually color it the way it's already out there instead of bringing something alien to 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 the communities down there. Mm. Well, you said that you do not necessarily want to go the the Western way of queer rights. That you don't want to have um, well alienate impact sort of on Pakistan. But at the same time, you work together with Denmark. The festival took place in Denmark last year. Um, so how how is this cooperation taking place? How would you describe this cooperation? What is the role of Denmark in this? Uh, well. Denmark because I live in Copenhagen, I'm based in Copenhagen, it's my hometown and uh, uh, the festival started in, in Denmark, uh, we were two uh, uh, friends who started this idea and uh, we feel it, that the festival has uh, equal significance at both places. As, uh, we actually tried to, the, fest, the festival's main goal is to, to to focus more on minorities. So in Denmark, we focus more on queer people of color, queer trans people of color, because we feel that uh, queer trans people of color are underrepresented in, in in many film festivals, or, 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 or if they are representative. So, so it's, it, I think if we have a festival that, that caters uh, primarily to, to queer trans people of color, uh, that can actually uh, make it more uh, significant to, it, to the issues. So, so, so we in Denmark, where we we, we, we chose the topics like brown feminism, uh, cutie parks, uh, queer people of uh, uh, queer people from East. So, so, so that's that's like a, we try we try to uh, include art and films which are made by or or, or which has um, uh, main uh, leads in uh, as in uh, queer trans people of color. Mm. Well, I think around the globe, Denmark has this image of being a very liberal, very gay-friendly country. Um, but you're focusing in this festival on minorities within the queer community. Can you describe the situation for those people in Denmark? Well, it's. Well, it's Minority within the queer community is not as big. They 
there is a minority, but it's not much united. There's not a big community as it as it is in maybe in England or or in the U.S. or Canada, uh, because the uh, cutie parks are communities are much bigger out there. But but there is a need for a cutie park community in Denmark as well, and and we are quite many. Um, and you, it's not a secret anymore that Denmark is going more right wing. The new government is uh, uh, very racist. I would openly say that, and and which affects a lot of people's attitudes as well. That the, the, the current refugee issue in Denmark, it, it's it's big. Uh, Denmark has said no to take any refugees out, and they are taking uh, refugees more as liability. So it's, it affects a lot of people's um, lives. It, it, uh, people are becoming more uh, vulgar talking about uh, people of color in this country. So, so, so it's it's becoming uh, difficult. Uh, it, it's it's a liberal country when it comes to uh, uh, LGB, but uh, there's a lot of work to do on trans issues in, in Denmark. There is, um, I, 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 we fail to find any uh, particular trans community. There are lots of trans people here, but, but there are a lot of trans people of color in this country, but, but there's not a such community for trans people of color. So, 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 so that's why we, when we do festival in Denmark, our focus is more on uh, queer people of color and transgender in, in Denmark. Hmm. Well, you were already talking about politics and you also mentioned the term pinkwashing. Um, how is the situation in, in Denmark, well, how do politicians handle the gay rights in connection with refugees? Because something that very often happens around the world is that liberal governments say, well, we don't want to take refugees because we have to protect our values, we have to protect the gay people in our country, we have to protect the women in our country and express, well, Islamophobia mainly with that. Um, is that something that happens in, in Denmark too, this kind of pink washing and using two, well, groups against each other? Well, uh, Denmark has, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm the right person to talk about uh, refugee situation when it comes to LGBT, but, but, but um, there is a, um, a volunteer organization that are, they are working on LGBT refugees. Uh, there is not as such segregation uh, done on the basis of sexuality when you seek asylum, but, 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 but uh, th those volunteer uh, NGOs, they are trying to, 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 to find safe spaces for LGBT refugees. And, I haven't heard. I mean, I'm I'm not sure if, if there is a, any particular focus on on, on, on LGBT refugees uh, as yet. But 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 I'm, I think it will be because right now there's a lot of Islamophobia. Uh, people are against, uh, or people are having bad taste of of of, of bringing more and more refugees. It's 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 becoming more of a debate issue. Uh, at the moment, or whether or not we should uh, we should bring in more refugees into this country, there's a big cut into into art industry. Uh, the new government is not uh, willing to to contribute into art, uh, both inside the Danish boundaries and outside the Danish boundaries. So, which affects a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of dialogues or a lot of tolerate, tolerated dialogues uh, around the world. So, 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 yeah, it's a it's slightly bizarre situation in Denmark at the moment. Hmm. Well, uh, to come to, to another topic again, um, well, next year the Teddy Award is celebrating its 30th birthday. And so I was also wondering, does a queer film award like the Teddy Award have a significance for a film festival in Pakistan? Yeah, of course. Um, Teddy Award uh, for for festival programmer is almost like a parent figure. We we feel tread Teddy as our grandmother, and uh, we love Teddy. And the queer programmers meeting is almost like a Christmas dinner where we all programmers from all over the world gather and uh, meet and greet and 
and share information. Uh, so Teddy Award has uh, a lot of significance for, for any queer film festival around the world. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a part of uh, Berlinal, which is uh, one of the biggest festivals the, around the world, and, and Berlinal has a focus on queer or queer cinema. That, that's, that's a very positive thing for, for queer cinema. And this is why um, a lot of new film festivals are being born. And uh, AX has also uh, its birth due to uh, Teddy Awards when we, in 2014, uh, announced our festival in Pakistan and asked for help through, through the programmers and the filmmakers who were present at that moment. And our first festival was actually only funded by our friends and families around the world. So we gathered something like $1,500 through crowdfunding and a lot of tri- film festival programmers and Teddy itself helped us like spreading the word out. So um, Teddy has great significance for us as well. Well, now that it's the 30th birthday, what is something that you would wish for for the future of queer film awards like the Teddy Award and queer film festivals in general? What would you wish, how would you wish them to develop? Uh, well, I think everything is going uh, on, on the right direction. There's a, the queer cinema is becoming bigger and bigger, but I'm, I'm, there's, there's one thing which I don't wish, which is if, if it becomes very commercial and become business. So, so we, should, we should keep uh, the, the faith in solidarity. We should keep the way we used to work. And it should be, I, 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 I wish Teddy can always be the mother of us, all of us, and, uh, and, and we produce more queer art, more queer cinema, and uh, which can develop more queer film festivals around the world. Because uh, film festivals or dialogue festivals or art festivals, uh, they are actually, they have a much significance on individuals' lives uh, uh, anywhere in the world. When we did Aks in Pakistan in 2014, I was surprised to see how it affected uh, the lives of audiences. I mean, we had people uh, who cried in the cinema, and they cried literally loud that we could hear them. Uh, and people came and gave us hug and, and shared their feelings. They could they could see a lot of things. I mean, we were screening some Latin American films, but people in Pakistan they can totally relate to their own lives to those films. So, so film festivals in general. Uh, has a big role to play and has great significance to, to, to its audiences.